Hi. <laughs> I'm a creation of a lot of people. I am a creation of people that had thoughts and beliefs in me. And I'd like to start by saying, one of the people locally, um, this auditorium's named after, and I got to thank him to his face. So thank you, Frank Basile and Katrina Basile, for what you do. Yeah. I'm part of your creation. Um, that being said, I'm a collector. I spend a lot of money on clothes. And I'm a guy, which is not common. Most guys don't do clothing. They do a polo shirt, some khakis, maybe cargo shorts, and we're good to go. That never cut it for me. I was a little different. And so what you see in front of you is a combination of what Paulina does, magazines. When I was a young kid growing up in Wanamaker, I was different. I stood out. I was kind of um, an introvert. I didn't actually put myself out there, even though I had an older brother that was like, you do it, you do it, go, go, go ask. So I learned how to be extroverted. But actually, I'm an introvert. This is, I would rather be having a root canal right now than be doing this. So just to get that out there. So you're gonna see a lot of hand gestures because I don't know what to do with them. Because I'm used to uh, dealing with car parts and, and the automotive industry. You put me in front of a microphone in Las Vegas showing off the newest Aston Martin, I will go to town because the Aston Martin will do all the work for me because everybody wants it. Not everybody wanted me. I found that out as a kid. So growing up in Wanamaker, you had corn and corn and we had a library. And so that was also my first job. So when I was in school, I was raised by rabid liberal librarians that got held on a kid that was a Jewish background from my father, kind of a Mennonite amish background from my mother, um, and a lot of confusion within this package. So I found myself in my senior year homeless because I'm a gay kid. And I lived in my car, basically, because in Franklin Township, you couldn't let the school know that you didn't live there because they wouldn't allow you to graduate. And I wanted to graduate with everybody that I knew. So I had to hide the fact that I'm living in my car and working in a library and doing whatever else I could possibly do to make it so I could get to that graduation. And I did it. And then. That's another part of those people who believe in you. Because at that time, you can't tell the entire truth about your situation. And I couldn't tell the entire truth about me as a young gay kid who was growing up in this very deeply religious environment in the state of Indiana. And then I find myself taking a job, and I had a, a manager. And I'm going to get emotional, and I apologize for it. But Bill Patterson believed in me and hired me for a job and saw my worth and he put me in for a job training program and this kid from Indiana who was an average student in high school ended up getting a I call it my GED degree from MIT they had a program at the time for my employer which was Ford Motor Company they believed in finding people that work with them, putting them into training programs, and then sending them out within their own company. So from that, I ended up working in the luxury division of a Ford Motor Company with Aston Martins, Jaguars, Volvos, Bucks and Hall Range Rovers, doing that kind of thing. And it was really kind of in that journey from being shipped off in Oklahoma for a stint and then coming to New York in about 93 and being plopped in and not fitting in still. I didn't have um, a tribe, I didn't have a community, but I had these magazines and I had this designer that always stuck out to me and it was just kind of like, 
I like his stuff because he, he's fighting everybody. He's not doing it the right way. He's not following the route where you have to do it in a systematic way. I could identify with that. And that was John Paul Gaultier. And if you don't know who John Paul Gaultier is, that's the guy that's been in the news recently because he's been in haute couture and fashion for over 50 years and he just retired. He's dressed Madonna. He's dressed Kylie Minogue. He's put all the, like, Bono. I, and these are people who I have their clothing in my collection. Um, I don't like to name drop, so it's kind of one of those situations where I'm still a Hoosier, where we're always like, don't brag about what you do, don't, you know, don't put it out there. You just go and do the work, and that's what's going to stand for you, and that's it. So not really that, it doesn't work out that way, because that's why I'm standing up here, because people go, tell your story. <laughs> so I'm up here telling my story in my way. And so I'm finding myself looking at this designer. I'm in New York. I'm a gay person in New York with a Midwestern background. So I have this morality and this sense that I cannot escape. And I'm seeing these people walking around in the height of AIDS, purple sores on the face, skull sunk in. And I noticed on my lunch hour that they would walk by this one boutique and they came to life. And they literally would just smile and be joyful. And it was this sense of just, oh my goodness, it was a party. And I got the courage to finally walk into that boutique. And I'm looking at the clothing. And I still remember the salesperson's name, Bill Bettiga. And he looked at me and he's just kind of like, come on in, check it out. And so I came in, and I was kind of like, oh, I remember seeing this jacket in a magazine, and it's over here, and this shirt. And then I do what every Hoosier does. I reach for the price tag, <laughs> and I look at it, and it's $879 for a shirt that's missing one sleeve. <laughs> no one pays $879. So Bill's looking at me, and he's like, but you love these clothes. And I was like, yeah, and I'm like, this is out of my price range. Even though it wasn't, because I was making very good money with Ford Motor Company, I couldn't spend it, because I'm a Hoosier, and I have that mortality <laughs> that this is not what we do, we don't do things in this way. And he looks at me, he's like, we have a sales rack. <laughs> it's in the back. Let me show it to you. So he takes me back there, and he shows me the sales rack, and I'm like, oh, you mark stuff down. This is, I can, I, I can, I can deal with that. So I look at the, do the things and I end up making a purchase and I have that purchase and I walk out and I have, remember that feeling and it's that feeling that I got when I was in that store with these people that were like, oh, you need to try this jacket on. Oh, you need to try that on. Oh, this would look good on you. And it all tied in because as soon as I kind of made that purchase, Ford, in their infinite wisdom, with anybody that was in engineering, we're now under Jack Nasser, so we're going to wear suits and ties to our job, and there is now a mandatory dress code. So no more polos, no more khakis, and this was also in the time where you had the three polo shirts that you might put together, like a red one and a yellow one, and you'd pop the collar, and you'd pop that other collar, and you'd spend about 13 minutes in that mirror trying to get it absolutely right before you strutted out like you were in, uh, what was the movie with the disco kind of thing going up and down, staying alive, but you were going to your job. <laughs> and so, they, I, I, me being me, Somebody telling me, there's a dress code, and you're going to follow it. And all my coworkers going, man, what are we going to do for clothes? They all ran to Brooks Brothers. So I'm like, mm, I'm not going there. So I went back to see my friend in this boutique, and he was like, we got something for you. It's on the sales rack. I'm like, ding, take it. Puts me in a lime green suit by Terry Mugler with leopard print shirt, leopard pony skin belt, leopard print pointed toed shoes like this, but pony fur. And I was like, okay, it's green. And I stroll into work and everybody does what I get still here to the, 
to when I'm in Indianapolis, what I call the Hoosier stare. They tilt their head to the side, <laughs> and then they squint a little bit, and then they go, on you, that looks really good. <laughs> but I could never wear something like that. And, I, and I'm like, OK, I can relate. Because that goes back to me riding in an elevator with Lauren Bacall to attend one of the events when I was in New York, which was the Equity Fights AIDS. And I'm in this elevator, and I'm wearing basically something that's kind of like this, which is, this is not a dress. It's actually a pair of trousers. And it has matching jacket. So I'm nervous as can be, because this is my first real red carpety kind of thing. And she looks over at me, and I'm riding down, because this was in the Dakota, where I'm staying with a friend of mine that I knew from school. And she looks over, and she does that whole, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Wanamaker, Indiana. <laughs> and she was like, why are you here? And I was like, well, I'm going to attend the Equity Fights AIDS event, and it's my first red carpet, and I'm really nervous because, you know, I'm going to get stared at, and people are going to make assumptions and judgments, and I just, she was like, sweetie, they're going to be more curious of you than you are of them. Have you seen how you're dressed? <laughs> and she gave me a wink because it wasn't something that was in that derogatory way. Because when I worked in the luxury division, you would get that, that stare, which was that. Mm. I'll go, mm -hmm. And I, would, I was getting that, which is why the clothing came into my life. Because I also had an aunt who lived here. And she looked at me and she was like, honey, you're tall. You're thin, and you can wear anything. So what you need to do with these people, you need to wear something where they know what it is, but they themselves would never wear it. <laughs> John Paul Gaultier. That fit the bill. And from then on, with all of these other people's help, I started buying and collecting John Paul Gaultier because it's one of those you can only be seen in something like this once or twice and then you got to put it back in the back of the closet <laughs> and they would consign it or they would sell it to a stylist who would then have a trunk show in some kitchen somewhere and I would find out about it and I would go and that's how I started to build my wardrobe and build my clothing collection and so when the Victorian Albert curators came, and then I also had like Cynthia M. Neus from Cincinnati Museum came. But the V&A counted all, just John Paul Gaultier. And it was 1,486 pieces. And that seems like, oh my gosh. But you have to realize, I've been collecting clothes for over 35 years. And when you do the math, that's like 52 garments a year. I bought quality. It wasn't really about, and sometimes I bought quantity, I'll admit it. <laughs> but a lot in my collection, people hear that number and they're like, this is outrageous. That's also neckties, that's underwear, that's socks, a handkerchief or two, or 20, or 37, <laughs> more like 140 now. And I'm still doing it, and I'm still collecting, and I'm still having that moment. Because I'm still that kid that sees himself trying to fit into his tribe, trying to find his spot. And I'm here in Indianapolis, and this is my home, and this is, my, this is where I've made my niche for myself of just being me. Because you'll get that Hoosier side stare. You'll get that look. And it's OK, because it, for me, it always invites kindness, and it always invites me to have that ability to engage with someone and have that intimate conversation. And I'm going to wrap it up with, oh, and by the way, this was the first Godier piece that I bought, which was that sweater. <laughs> but the unique thing about it, if you look closely, it has a very distinct little sparkle to it. And that mirrors me. Because once you're into my world, I will help you sparkle because it'll help me. So it's about giving back, and I, I'm so grateful to be up here and being able to share my story and my journey. And I want to tell people, 
If you're struggling to find your tribe, you'll find it. I'm living proof.